impressions in this very unusual start to the GDLN session, but we hope that you actually learn from the experience of Spain and in Europe and the challenges that they are facing as developed countries in terms of climate change. So it's not just an issue for developing countries. My name is Habiba Gite. Many of you know me. We've uh, talked and exchanged emails, but uh, I'm playing the role of a facilitator and chair for this session. I am dealing with climate change and capacity development for adaptation, and I'm fortunate that I'm able to combine my personal commitment and professional responsibility within the World Bank. Um, maybe just the, the challenges we are facing to, to give an idea of, of the situation in, in Uganda. Um, our water resources are all part of the Nile system, nearly all of them, and so they are, they are shared with, with other riparian members. Um, we have some large lakes and rivers, but the resource is not even distributed, both in time but also in space. So that is one of the challenges, that the resource is there, it may not be where the people are, and in some seasons you don't get any rain at all, and in others you get excess rain that's one of the and, and that that frequency has now increased in in the recent years that it's important to have political recognition and support and it's also important to have a technical basis and understanding of of what is happening and how it affects the system before you move on to the drainage let me bring in tanzania thank you very much the more pollution and uh, and the pollution water resources has brought about the stresses on the rivers which tend even to dry. And in some parts of the central part of the country is experiencing a drought, and in the other parts of the country. But the government has initiated the decentralization process in the institution so that they can manage these water resources in the, in the sustainable manner so that if any other stakeholders are to be involved. Like in Uganda, we have also established the Integrated Water Resources Management professionals who are brought in to establish the system so that it can be employed even to other parts of the country so that the water resources can be managed in the sustainable manner. Can I move to Costa Rica? Because Costa Rica, you're a fairly wet country, tropical country, May some different commonalities between you and Seattle. In the Costa Rican case particularly, we have been begun to see the uh, Environment and Energy uh, Ministry, which includes water also, has uh, uh, committed uh, Costa Rica to carbon neutrality and also a climate strategy which has much to do with competitivity. So we are trying to focus our adaptation strategies to these aspects. We are also trying to secure uh, uh, water supply for uh, many uh, aspects of uh, private industry which have big problems. For instance, banana production represents uh, uh, close to, it affects about 15 percent of the country's uh, population. So any actions by these uh, large industries will have a significant impact on those uh, portions of the population. We're looking at this then, and of course, although we are Nearly 98% uh, our supply is uh, urban uh, with good production capabilities and the rest is in the countries. But this does not mean that we are safe or exempt from uh, climate change effects. I will also say a word about virtual water. Mm -hmm. Virtual water mm -hmm. has a lot to do with trade agreements. And virtual water is one thing to be tackled very closely. That is to say that if agricultural goods are going to be exported at high scale, the virtual water and the shadow prices of water have to be kept in place. I mean, there's a need to be having a very sound financial approach to water. And having said that, please make sure you do not reduce artificially the water prices because this is going to backfire at the very end. So this is one thing to be kept in mind. No, not play, do not play around with water prices and water costs. Mm -hmm. If you want to subsidize something, it should come from another portion of the economy, but not from mm -hmm. water. If not, distortions that are going to be related at the end with climate change are going to backfire. Uganda. 
Yeah, thank you, Habib. I think one of the points which you touched on but didn't come out clear is capacity building, which is related to awareness raising. And maybe one which might not be tackled immediately is financing adaptation mechanisms. Thank you, Uganda. Ghana. My recommendation, especially with protecting uh, water sources and river uh, catchment areas, is to have a kind of um, benefit to the communities. I mean, the communities own those systems and they, they, they depend on them. So if there are pressures on them, then they will depend so much on those systems as to destroy them. There must be a way of paying back or enabling them to, to, to improve the systems once they get some benefits out of it, so that those systems continue to, uh, to, to sustain itself. I think that it's a wonderful opportunity to find and share innovative models of success. And um, I think the point was just made about uh, creating uh, a desire to move in the direction of this change rather than it being something that, that we fear and it's the unknown and we're avoiding it. What are some adaptations that are providing benefit to the community. Um, the, the one example that I showed, people don't even know that it, that it performs a drainage function. They just love it because it makes their neighborhood look, look better. They like it aesthetically. And I think that there are, there are uh, linkages to sustainability, to uh, overall um, quality of life that, that these issues relate to that perhaps create a more um, inspiring forward direction rather than, than being uh, fearful about the, the negative impacts of climate. I, I'm being a little bit um, uh, optimistic here, but, but I think that there are, there are examples that can excite and, and energize people if we can find these models and share them. Uh, and, and I guess on the flip side of that coin is I think it's really important to understand what the barriers are. Are they and, and they are many, but are they political? You know, what are the political barriers? What are the technical barriers? What are the social barriers? And then seek to design approaches and models that would help overcome those barriers and, and bring people together around solutions to uh, redesign a framework so that we can get over those barriers. And they're, they're probably unique and different in every case, but I think there's more richness of detail um, that could come out from the discussion that we just had from every participant in terms of really what does it take to take that next step. And so I think mining that out of the participants would also be a useful thing to do. Climate change is a serious matter and we have to be very serious about it. We have to have a very serious approach. But having said that, yeah. The first great spiritual thing is that we have hope and that we, have, we are optimistic that we have enough knowledge and capabilities to work, work out solutions. Now, that means to say that we need to be very careful to draw from the knowledge we already have and have innovation. I think that we need to have willpower, but we need to have courage, and you said that. We need to have education, but education is not enough. We need to have capacity building. I think that the thing that we have to change more in terms of climate change regarding our societies is culture, our cultural approach into adaptation and mitigation. And I would say one final remark. The best is yet to come. We need to be pretty sure that the best is yet to come. We, we need to work very hard and we need to work very close together among countries and share, share, share experience all the time.